Welcome friends, in this one, let's give an error bound when e to the x is approximated by its fourth degree Taylor polynomial about x equals 0 for the absolute value of x less than or equal to 0.5. Notice the key phrase, an error bound, not the error bound. Kind of important because it means that there isn't one answer. So first of all, let's just remind ourselves. So e sub n is the following, absolute value between a function and the nth degree polynomial. It's less than or equal to m, an absolute value, times x minus a, raised to the m plus 1 over m plus 1 factorial, where m is a bound, once again, a bound, not the bound, so to speak, on the m plus first derivative of the function. So an absolute value, the n plus first derivative, is less than or equal to m. How does that apply here? Well, that applies here as follows, friends. Take a look e to the x, when you expand it, is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, which is then 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6, all the way to x to the 4th over 24. That's expansion using a 4th degree quantity, your polynomial, okay? So now take a look at the next stage. What is this graph that I'm showing you? Now this graph shows the fifth derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x still. e to the x function, remember, is unique in that sense. And if you look at it very carefully, study this. So where I'm tracing, that's e to the x. There's a green line that represents y equals 2. Notice that this line here, all the way at point 5, right here, is above e to the x, which is the fifth derivative of e to the x. Is that the only possibility, though? No. Because this says an error bound. If you wanted to, you could use y equals 3, for example. And that would be represented by this line right here, by the red line. That would also work because, as you can see right here at 0 0.5, if you follow the laser there, you see the curve is below the green line, and it's also below the red line. They will both work. So which one do you take? Either one. So this is what I mean. Take a look. If I choose to use y equals 2 as a bound, basically, on the fifth derivative of e to the x, look at what happens. e sub 4 is an absolute value f of x minus the fourth degree polynomial would then be less than or equal to, and I'm using 2 in this position right here. That's a bound on the fifth uh, derivative of e to the x. And then here you put 0 0.5 minus 0, you raise it to the fifth, Remember, this is n equals 4 right here. So that means here you do 4 plus 1, which is 5. And on the bottom, you have then 5 factorial. You punch this into your calculator. However you choose to do the calculation here, that's 0 0.00052. So that's one way to do it. What if you use not 2 in this position, but instead use 3 right here? Why not? Is it going to be the same thing? No, it won't be the same thing. Take a look. You're going to have, again, f of x minus the fourth degree polynomial would then be less than or equal to an absolute value. And right here, instead of using 2, I'm using 3. And then it says 0 0.5 minus 0 to the fifth still over 5 factorial. You punch this in, and you calculate the value to be 0 0.00078. As you can see, that's different compared to the previous one. Look at this last graph, and let's analyze it very carefully. The red curve that you see right there, that represents the absolute value of f of x minus t sub 4 of x. In other words, what I did is I took this right here, 1 plus x plus x root over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, and I subtracted it from e to the x, an absolute value, I graphed that quantity. That's that red curve that you see right here. There are two other lines here. You want to make sure you understand those lines. This lower bluish line where I'm tracing, that's 0 0.00052. Notice that if you look along the horizontal axis on the bottom, 0 0.5 is right there. So if you look on the red curve, which is the error, you see that that error is less than 0 0.00052 at 0 0.5, for example. And it's less than that everywhere here, you see? The curve is below the blue line. Further, on the other hand, if you use 3 as a bound on the fifth derivative of e to the x, 
then you produce this value and that value graphed here is the following line this line right here this black line basically and notice that at 0 0.5 the error curve which is the red curve is still way below that line well that's it i hope it's been helpful friends thank you so much for watching please leave a like please subscribe i will see you in another video